In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at using some of the advanced editing tools when you're working with PIP or Picture in Picture. They've come up with some new changes in the interface and tools, and we'll show you how to use them in this tutorial. Please look at the following example, and then we'll show you a bit about how to construct this yourself. The audio for the spokesperson is blank. It was in the original but it didn't matter in terms of illustrating what we're going to do. So please take a look and then we'll show you the process. What we have on track number one is this visual, this aerial shot and it's basically a beach. We're going to use it as a promotion for a getaway, selling spaces at perhaps a hotel, motel, vacation package, something like that. So I need a spokesman. So let's use picture in picture to do that. We'll stop this. And then I have this video of this gal who I'm going to pretend will be my spokesperson. I'll take and drag it down and I'll put it in a higher numbered track. Here I'm going to put it in track four. Now, in order to get into the advanced PIP editing, which just changed, I'm going to click on the Edit button with that particular video highlighted. I'll click on the Edit button. Now I'm going to go directly to the Advanced button. When I click here, I have several options. You notice I have a Properties, a Cutout, and an Animation. Now, one of the limits I have in this particular video clip is you notice the top part of her head is cut off, which is pretty normal in videoing. But if she's a spokesperson, that's going to cause a problem that I'll have to solve in a moment. I'll show you how to do that. If that happens in some footage that you are using. Well, on the Properties button, we have the position and size at the top. We can flip it horizontally or vertically. I'm just going to use the mouse and put it on one of the corners and we'll make her a little bit smaller, something like that. I'm going to move her over to the bottom. Now I'm taking her out of the preferred area because I don't want her to be looking like she's floating in the air. So we'll put her from the bottom of the screen all the way up to this point here. This looks pretty good and we could use it. Now when it comes to these, you can use several modest controls. You could put a border on it by clicking here and you can change the color of the border. Uh, two color gradient or four and you can change the actual color you're using in your border. You can change obviously the size of the border, the opacity. You could put a shadow on there if you want. We'll click that. And so you have these common controls that you have when you're doing picture in picture. You also have some reflection and motion blur. I don't use those much. But let me show you something that's new that I think is kind of cool. Let's go to the next button, the one called Cutout. I'm going to click on that. And here we have one that says AI Background Remover. Now, I might want her background there, but in this case, let's see what it looks like without that. I'll just click on that and it will process it. I can change the edge thickness, etc. But it did a pretty good job in this case of removing the background. Now, let me show you a gotcha when you use this. I go back to Properties. Oh, I want to border around her and I want to border around the entire image. If I click on Border, it only borders what's left of the image. So everything that's cut out, the border doesn't touch. I could also put a shadow back in, but I don't want either of those with her. I don't think it's appropriate. So that's a limitation if you do a cutout. It changes the area of the picture that's impacted by all these properties. But the cutout is kind of what I want, so I'm going to stick with it. So I can also do another thing which is cool. I can click on the animation button at the top and I have a host of animations. I can do in or out or loop, but there's a host of really nice ones. I'm going to stay with my in animation and I'm going to click on the ripple 01 here. Let's see what happens. It comes out from the center. That's not too bad. I like that. And if I want to change the duration of the animation and slow it down, all I need to do is move to my timeline use a double headed arrow and I can lengthen the in animation so it's slower or I can speed it up so it's very, very quick. So we'll speed it up in this case.
But now we have a very quick in animation. We have the background remove around our spokesperson. I'm going to click on OK. Now the other problem I'm going to have here is because this image was shot with part of her head cut off at the very top, it doesn't look natural. I want to change how that works. So what I'm going to do, let's click here, is make some changes when I bring in my title. So let's give myself a little bit more room so you can see all the tracks we'll be using here. And I have music at the bottom which I muted and let's move up a bit. I'm going to take a title so let me go back and close the window here, go to my titles and uh, I have a custom title that I used which was built on another one called Southern Getaway. So I'm going to click on that and drag it, there's our, my title, and drop it down on a track that's above the gal, put it there. And if I play this, it kind of works, except the, the odd thing you see is that her head is cut off. Now that's not exactly what I want. I like the motion title. It works pretty good. Let me make it longer here. Well, at least match the duration that she's on the screen here. And so it's functional, but it's a still bit distracting at the top. And the title doesn't have a background. So what I did, and this is a good way to fix this kind of problem, is I took a gradient, a color board, and put it behind the title. So I have my motion title, and then what I did, I went to the media room, and we'll open up the side panel, and then I went to my color boards, and I choose a gradient color, and I went to this aqua one, and I dropped it down to track number two. So that's all I did, So, and I resized it. So let's make that visible. I have it invisible right now. And we'll turn it back on. There is my aqua color board. So I'm going to take the color board and edit it. So I have to change the location and the size. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my title and I'm going to make it invisible. That allows me to click on my color board. I'm going to take it and move it up so it matches right at the very top edge of her head. And we have a little bit of a snap to action going on there. Then I'm going to take my title and turn it back on. And I probably will have to reposition that. So I will move it so it looks like it's about in the center of my color board. That's not too bad. And so now when I play this, we do have the limitation in the way in which my spokesperson was shot. Let's see how it works here. We'll play for a bit. But it doesn't seem too unnatural now. She's in sense behind the sign, and that uh, adjustment makes it work pretty good. So if you run into a situation like this where you're doing a picture-in-picture, -picture, especially with a person or something, you can compensate for some limitations in the original footage. We hope this has been helpful as we looked a little bit at advanced picture-in-picture -picture editing in CyberLink PowerDirector.